Hello and welcome to Geocast episode 661, recorded the weekend of December 19th. I'm your host, Patrick. This week's screenshot, Phlox achieves ultimate power as an exalted angel, then uses it to make different colored blade barriers in the 200, or, sorry, 535th video screenshot of the week. Uh, that would be, let's see, that's in the end of Big Top. Uh, is where they are doing the massive amounts of blade barrier, or at least the three different ones. Uh, if you're not familiar with the different blade barriers, uh, the white one would be from either a cleric or a favorite soul. Uh, and then the purple one is from Fadar Collusionist, and then the red one, or orange one, uh, that is the epic moment out of the um, Exalted Angel Tree. We like to talk about Dungeons & Dragons online nearly every weekend. You can watch us through Twitch, YouTube, the DDO forums, iTunes, or from our website at DDOcast.com. DDOcast is hosted by Cyber Ears, the awesome podcast hosting network. Shows are usually available within a few days of recording. Uh, we do plan on having a show, one more show, probably this year at least. Um, sure, he's still out on whether we'll have one on both the weekend of Christmas and New Year's, um, but the, possibly not. Uh, but they will probably not. If, if there's a show Christmas, it will not be record, not be live. It'll be a pre-recorded show, uh, just like this one, uh, because of all of the things that come with uh, the end of the year. Uh, but you can stay updated by following us on our social media pages or our website, teocast.com, with our calendar. Uh, on the podcast this week, we have the second half of the discussion we had uh, looking back at 2021 uh, in review. Uh, so we'll do that on the back half. Uh, see, for now, we'll jump into uh, some game news. Uh, we did have uh, another hotfix. Um, not exactly sure why they're calling this a hotfix instead of a patch. I don't know, there's not very much to it. Uh, but update 52 Hotfix 2 was released on Wednesday, December 15th. Uh, and things that were in there, they fixed the Snowball Swarm cookie in the festival. Uh, yay. Like, the thing thing's never been that useful anyway. Um, but they fixed it. Uh, artificers are no longer prevented from mounting horses. Uh, I believe that had to do with, like, the auto-charging rune arm knocking you off your horse. Which is something they fixed more than once. Uh, these uh, new quest, Dread Sea Scrolls, uh, had a bunch of things fixed for it. Um, a race condition has been fixed that prevented the broadcast of some players' deaths on the hardcore server. Uh, good. People should know when other people die. That's kind of <laughs> it's kind of one of the fun parts about hardcore server. Um, bonus days for the week. Uh, well. They'll be done by the time this is out. Uh, but it was daily double double daily dice XP through no December 19th. Uh, December deals and the sales for the week. Uh, the December deals for the week, 75% uh, off of the Traveler's Terrific Trunk. Uh, if you don't know what this is, this is a bundle of uh, different items. I will call attention to the fact that uh, at seventy five percent off, this thing is like seven hundred and fifty points, something like that. Uh, and you get five, uh, either sovereign one XP potions. They're the fifty percent version. Uh, I think the three hour fifty percent version. Uh, if you look at how much those cost alone, five of those, it's like two or three times the cost of the terrific trunk while it's on sale like this at seventy five percent off. Uh, so if you're planning on buying. 50% XP potions, just get this a couple times. Like, it's seriously cheaper um, than buying them normally. Uh, plus, you get uh, some Slayer potions, uh, Major Slayer potions, some Remnant potions. Uh, what else is in there? There's an outfit, Astral Shards. Uh, oh, um, the Omni Spell Dusts, I believe, are also in there. Maybe some Bigby Hands. Um, so, there's it, it's a really good deal. I mean, again, it's cheaper than just buying the XP potions. Plus, you get all that other stuff. So, uh, you can also get fifty percent off of the shifter race, 
and 35% off of the Tome of Destiny plus one historic. Uh, that's through December 23rd. Finders Keepers is the sale, 20% off of Astral Shards, Sentient and Jewelers Toolkits, Loot Boosts uh, through December 23rd. And you can get a free spell of opening with the coupon code GUNNAOPENIT. Uh, all of that is also through December 23rd. Uh, additionally, uh, Jerry did mention uh, on the weekly Wednesday lunchtime live stream this week, uh, which will be the last live stream for him this year. Uh, that the, uh, let's see, the gesture will remain until the 16th of January. Uh, coins, I believe, will stop dropping on the 9th. It's pretty typical. It's usually a week before. A week, week extension there. Um, veteran status 3 will remain till January 2nd. Um, starting on January 23rd and ending on January 2nd. Uh, so a nice... Nice good long run uh, there. Uh, will be plus 10% heroic X and epic XP, plus a 15% uh, VIP XP boost. Uh, epic and heroic boxes are going to be returning, and plus 20 hearts of wood and wishes of inheritance will also be returning. However, there's not a date fixed yet. Uh, on top of that, he also uh, let us know that uh, the raid and adventure pack uh, are slated for January 2022. Uh, the anniversary event, which will be number 16, uh, in late February 2022. No surprise there. Uh, also, you mentioned that they're, they're planning on doing two hardcore seasons in 2022. I do not believe that's counting the one that's currently going, season five. Uh, and then there's also a new producer's letter expected early in 2022. Also, no surprise. Uh, although... <laughs> Early 2022, I mean, January, March, like, we had all in between of that, I believe, the years, so. Uh, that's what we got going on uh, there. Uh, community news, we had the 451st Video Chronicle. Uh, this is the last chronicle of the year and holidays. Uh, Lara Levine has created a DDO adventure video called Entering the Mist. Check that out. Uh, Matrim's DDO character planner has been updated. Uh, character Builder Lite has also been updated. So if you'd like to use those tools uh, to build your characters, there you go. Vaklov99 uh, has created a passive past lives feats planner. Uh, it's an, uh, so you can check out that app in your web browser. Uh, let's see, the guild hall for the week, uh, the recruitment forums, best place to find a guild. Uh, so post your interest in a, finding a guild or details about your guild on the DDO forums. Uh, translation, if you would like to highlight your guild, send it to contact at standingstonegames.com with the subject line guild hall. Uh, and you can get your guild featured because Jerry is out of guilds to feature. <laughs> uh, the comment, what was the best thing that happened to your character in 2021? Uh, well, my tank finished his past lives, at least for what existed at the time. So that's cool. <laughs> Go with that. Uh, let's see, fan site news. We got a shout out for our year in review show last week, which we will again continue part two this week. Uh, DDO stream is your first time to first shop to find DDO on Twitch. This week, Zero Smash has your death calls. Brighter days ahead. Uh, celebrate the holidays. And Doug Glendower constantly raids. Uh, let's see. Voodoo Spice, Spice is moving his DDO stream to Saturdays starting January uh, 1st. Uh, Zero Smash will be moving on earlier on Mondays to 10 a.m. Eastern. If you watch those shows. Also on Twitch, Semeku Gorgarian paints and raises money for the uh, homeless. Good job. Um, Tom Kapoor hits 1750, and Olivia Crowley plays DDO with new players. On YouTube, Alda Aldbar has a solo and walkthrough guide to Stormcleave Outpost. Axel has thoughts about Dread Sea Scrolls, and Evil Beaker Gaming cruises slow with track. Trim Tom gets demonic with Reunia uh, in, new, in a new Dungeon and Developers Insights. Uh, that's Linabel. I'm not sure why, <laughs> why they're using that. The other name? Uh, but there you go. Uh, Samus Grobo is helping Cordovan and others hit 20 in hardcore and streaming it live. So you can watch uh, that video. Good luck, Samus. I hope you make it there. 
with them. Uh, let's see, the fifth season of Hardcore League continues. Uh, you can test your medal through February 1st, 2022. Uh, I'll again mention that the in-game help system uh, recently received an update. Uh, so you can check out those uh, changes if you missed them last week. Uh, also, a reminder to put in your codes. Uh, Video Quest 2021 uh, will get you all of the adventure packs, uh, which is a lot of content. So if you haven't put that in, stop what you're doing. Unless you're driving, get where you're going. Get your computer and put that code in, please. Uh, get that free content. Um, also, if you're looking for the anniversary cloak, uh, you have until the end of the year as well. Both of those you should expect to turn off midnight on uh, 31st uh, going into the new year. So do not delay. Do not pass go. Put it in now. Go, go, go. Uh, let's see, DioCast News. I actually mentioned that we uh, are not expecting to have another live show at the end of the year. Uh, but I do expect to have a show uh, at least uh, between now and the 8th, uh, then the 8th of January. That's when we're going to do our review of Update 51 uh, and probably also Update 52. Um, so we haven't done the a full review on that. Uh, we did talk about it during our, our 2021 in review show, but we we're going to go more in-depth into them, uh, which we haven't done yet. Uh, so that'll be coming. Uh, a little bit of lightning post this week. Uh, so thanks uh, to those who wrote in for that. Uh, I will mention there was... Uh, I see the, the comment like this occasionally. Um, when someone mentioned, hey, uh, you're not representing my viewpoint uh, in the 2021 review discussion. Uh that's totally probably true. Um, we don't like. There's a limited number of guests that we have on the show, uh, and you know, I just don't. It's not possible to represent every viewpoint. Uh, additionally, um, just for kind of a uh, little bit behind the scenes, um, I asked probably uh, half a dozen people directly uh, if they wanted to be on that show. And then also had an open invitation to another dozen people. Um, we got two plus one who I just told the wrong date and they weren't available <laughs> um, because and that was totally not my fault. Um, but all that to say, uh, if you would like to have a certain viewpoint on the show, um, I would invite you on the show um, to share that opinion. Uh, just send me an email at docast at gmail dot com. We'll get hooked up uh, on that regard. Uh, I do love having more viewpoints. Uh, I do understand that some of the viewpoints that are on here are um, not new viewpoints uh, at this point, especially my own. Uh, however, I am somewhat limited by who I can get to show up uh, at a time that I can show up as well. So if you would like to share your viewpoint, let me know. If you have someone in mind that you think would have a great viewpoint to share, send them my way. Uh, all of these things. Uh, we'd love to get more viewpoints on the show. Um, also, uh, Vino uh, wrote in uh, so that uh, regarding Shadow Dancer, uh, the Shadow Dancer tree, uh, what's in Shadow Dancer tree stacks with everything on live. Uh, update 52 was supposed to have fixed uh, Depth of Darkness, which was incorporated in Shadow Dancer. Uh, and it should stack with Incorporeal from Ghostly, uh, although it doesn't. Uh, they might have fixed the Wizard Monk Enhancement Tree Incorporeal. Didn't test it. Uh, but not items from game. Uh, also, uh, Wand and Scroll Mastery in the tree doesn't stack with Enhancement Wand and Scroll Mastery. Te he tested that. Uh, let's see. Uh, the placement uh, works fine in Depths of uh, Darkness. Uh, didn't see any uh, where to point this out in the forums, uh, but knows that I'm solid in keeping up with things, and I played Rogue also. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> I try to try to keep up with things. Uh, sometimes I'm more successful than others. Uh, but thanks for uh, writing in. Appreciate that. All right, uh, with that, uh, we'll close up the news portion of the show. Uh, again, uh, part two of our... 2021 in review uh, discussion with Voodoo and Axel is coming up next. 
but thanks for listening to the show. Uh, thanks to uh, Axel and Voodoo for joining me last week to record that. Uh, and thanks to all the contributors for TDO Cast uh, and to Sandstone Games and the Wizards of the Coast and to Cyber Ears for hosting the podcast. If you'd like to support the, sh- the show, you can visit our website at DDOcast.com or you can support us on Patreon. If you have a DDO themed webpage or you Twitch DDO and you'd like to be featured on our website, you can email us at DDOcast at gmail.com. And you can hit us up at DDOcast.com for our show notes, MP3s, our calendar, previous shows, and other fun stuff, including various adventures in DDO, DD Tabletop, and even some other games. Uh, if you have a comment in this episode, a question you'd like to hear us answer, a topic you'd like to hear us discuss, or, or you just want to say hi, or you want to be on the show, uh, leave a comment or email us at DDOcast at gmail.com. You can also find us on social media and follow us for the latest cast updates at DDOcast on Twitter is the best place. All right, so stay tuned for part two of our 2021 in review discussion. Let's see. Scroll Seal Shard revamp. This is a big change. Long coming. I think very well received. I don't think I've seen a lot of complaints about it. Um, I love it. Yeah. I thought it was awesome. I, I really had a good time just playing around with a lot of the new minimum level 20 stuff when I was getting like leveling some of my older characters recently. And yeah, and I'm, I'm glad they didn't make it overly grindy. I could pretty much get what I <laughs> get what I wanted. And yeah, it's it's been fun. A lot of new stuff, to, new gear to consider. Special yeah. mention and props to SSG for making the Ring of Spell storing so much easier to make epic. Right. And now legendary. And if you didn't know, the epic and legendary, while they're exclusive, you can have one of each in your inventory. So that's eight charges. Huge. <laughs> I never thought that they would make that one easy to get. They did. And, uh, and hats off to SSG. Thank you. That was awesome. I was kind of wondering if they were going to do a legendary version of that. Um, I kind of saw a no, world where right. they wouldn't wouldn't do a legendary because they didn't do a legendary sword of shadows. Um, yeah, that's they, that's where I give them uh, a stick. So I give them <laughs> props for the ring of spell storing. I think they needed to do legendary sword of shadows. I don't even play two handers, so I'm I'm advocating for you sword of shadows lovers out there. They needed to do something. I think there was some kind of incremental thing that they could have done. You know, chain, take the one slot, make it colored, maybe add ghostly to it. Just something simple to make it a little bit more for those right. who love the Epic Sword of Shadows, give you a little bit more to love without making it ridiculously OP. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, one of these days, I really need to go through the new items and just see if like there's a um, a new set of gear that I, sh- I could put on at level 20 instead of what I've been using for my TR build. Um, but also like what I have works great. <laughs> like I don't have to go get new stuff and hold new stuff, which is really kind of the problem I have. It's like I love that there. I love how much more gear there is at level twenty now, like and at level thirty. Like this threw so much gear at us all at the same time. Like it was like my gearing brain like fell apart. <laughs> it was so much gear to consider. But really kind of where it ended up for me was, well, on my TR build, like, what I got is working really great. There's a, a couple stuff there that maybe would be probably comparable if I didn't have all this other stuff I already had. Uh, but also, it's just like, I could get another gear set at level 20, but then I have to hold on to another gear set for a TR character that I'm, you know, pulling stuff out of TR cache all the time. So I just didn't. <laughs> it works fine. Um, but I should maybe look at the set bonuses in particular. Uh, but yeah, so it a lot of lot of fun changes with that. That I love. I I really like that they you can turn in your scroll seals and shards and get stuff. That was great, right? So, um, should we talk about the stat squish? I think it's time to talk about the stat squish. 
<laughs> no one wants to start. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm not a numbers guy. I'm not, you know, I don't look at numbers. I don't care. Uh, I'm just, I'm like a based on how it feels. And generally speaking, the game just feels about the same to me. I mean, I'm one one thing I have noticed is that I feel like, you know, I like to play caster tanks, and I feel like mobs are hitting me harder. And some people have said that that's because you know we have less PRR. Maybe I don't know. So I feel like it's more challenging to be a tank because they're I'm definitely getting beat up more <laughs> in High Skull Reaper than I used to before. But uh, you know, generally, you know, it's not like. I don't feel like there was some giant nerf, like that everybody was screaming nerf before this happened. I don't see that. You know, I just see that as we just reorganized the closet to make room because we want to buy a new pair of shoes. And there were shoes all over the place, and we just got an organizer, and that's all. It's This was no big deal. It wasn't the end all, or it wasn't the, you know, the doomsday that so many people were crying. Like, it's just, it. I don't know. It's fine. The game feels fine to me. Yeah. Yeah, it was fine. I, there's like a couple items where I thought maybe they squished them too much, but for the most part, it was okay. They also I, unsquished I, some, right? Like the assassinate mm-hmm. got unsquished. Yes, that was like recently. Oh my gosh! Mm-hmm. Like if someone uses Falconry, the that was well, that was uh, well. Recently, they buffed assassinate on items, uh, values on items. But um, I didn't really notice much of a difference pre like pre pre that change post squish. Yeah. Um. Like my gear set, I did felt fine. Like it didn't feel like I I was immediately had to regear everything. If I was smart, I would have talked about this with and then transition to update fifty one, which I didn't. So we'll probably come back to this. But um, Grey Wolf, I think, is saying a lot about kind of what I I feel at the same time. Like you look at the stat squish and the epic destiny changes, and you look at numbers like, oh my gosh, they're so much lower, and and then it's like I'm actually doing higher skulls. Than I used to, and it's fine, right? Like, there are places that, like, the relative power just feels really good to me about where it's at. Maybe even a little too good. That might yeah, not if be... any, you know, right now, you know, we went from people crying nerf on the forums to people complaining our tens too easy, and that's where we are now. Yeah, you know, and and so while I said I'm getting hit harder. I act, the mobs are going down faster. Yep. So, a, a noticeably faster. Yes. So that is, that's another note, thing that I've noticed. Especially when you get to bosses, right? Like, I think bosses seem to be where I've, I notice even, a little bit even more. Um, the, I definitely, like, I, I agree. Like, it, I get hit harder, right? <laughs> but I kill things so much faster, I get hit less. So it kind of works its way out. And I do hope that they bring some challenge back into Reaper. But I also hope that it's not, I get hit and I die. If that makes sense, right? Like, I don't want them to just, like, increase the damage um, or increase the hit points. I would, like, this is kind of why I'm, I'm an advocate for bringing the hardcore champions to live. Um, like, just all of them. More, more of those I think would provide more challenge, but in different ways. Um, I also would like to see more Reapers because I think that the variety of challenges that those things could, could impose, I think is a more interesting and better challenge than, Oh, they just hit hard, really stupid hard or have big sacks of hit points. Right. Um, so that's kind of what, I hope that they do with Reaper mode is is introduce some challenge to Reaper mode that's not things are just hit harder or have more hit points. I really hope that before they do anything like make Reaper harder, I really hope that they take a look at overperforming things currently. In the new Epic Destinies, there's definitely some things overperforming. That's fair. And we need to bring that stuff down to a reasonable level before we like, oh, let's make Reaper harder. <laughs> to be clear, like I even before these changes, like I I have long advocated for the hardcore champions coming to to live because I think they're fun and frankly, like I didn't realize how tired I was of the champions we do have until the hardcore champions were different, and that was amazing <laughs> and fun. 
Uh, and also just like new reapers. Like I, I've been championing that for longer than this, either the, the itemization or the S Epic Destiny revamp, right? Um, so. I wouldn't be surprised to see them just add more reaper levels, like go 11 or 12, because that way they could give people more challenge, want more challenge, but at the same time not make current reaper harder for people who don't want it to be harder. I mean, so they could make both people happy, both sets of people happy. Yes, and I think there's going to be a a pain point if they do kind of what I'm saying, but like, I don't think we should have this many R10 groups. I mean, I know that may not be a popular opinion, but like, uh, I think I think an average pug, like you should be able to like pick up some people together and be able to go to one R3. Fine, right? Like if you've got a good group, good balance, you're doing thing, you know, using good tactics, R3, sure, fine, no problem, right? Um, so I think like the lower skulls are fine. It's when you get into like the six, seven, eight, nine, ten range, like it starts to feel like this doesn't feel like what the design intent is supposed to do. Um someone in the chat saying that R three is soluble at this point. I mean like R six is kind of soluble if you do it right in certain quests. Depends I don't on think, the content. Yeah, it depends on the content. It depends on what you're doing. Uh, depends on how good you are as a player and how much, like how many reaper points you have and a whole bunch of things, right? But like people can solo R six. There's some quests that people solo R ten, right? Like that just doesn't. Well, I can solo like R three Ravenloft, and I'm like on my melee cleric is not even a good build, right? So, um, so I think the. I think well, Reaper needs a balance build. pass, and it needs to be more difficult. And players need players shouldn't feel entitled to be able to all go do R ten. Like you should have to get like R ten. I think should be hard, and you should have to get a really good group together to do R tens. That's my thought on it. I know that's probably not popular, but that's kind of what I think. Well, like I even go farther. Like when it was Reaper was first introduced, I always thought, and I know the ship has long since sailed on this, but I always thought like R10 should be borderline incompletable just because it's <laughs> healthy for players to always have some yeah. higher goal to shoot for, a higher difficulty to shoot for. So like I thought that would be a good standard. I mean, obviously that's not the way it ended up working out, but it was for a while. I mean, if they want to add like up to R15 or something, I, it should be like incompletable basically r15 i think i just need to scale scale more this challenge needs to scale better and it needs to not just be they hit harder and they and they have more hit points well it's healthy for there to always be a difficulty that yeah. challenges even the most even the best players in the game on the best builds uh, because if that doesn't exist those players eventually get bored and quit so it's just healthy to have that challenge there for everybody. Everyone should have the opportunity to to have a challenge in DDO, no matter if you're on the best build with the best gear. I, mean, can, I see this in my guild a lot, where it's like when they were trying to like we've completed all the I shouldn't say we because I wasn't part of most of these, but like we've done all the raids on R10 at this point. I th I think pretty sure, um, and. They had a lot of fun trying to make that happen, right? Like, because the raids are still hard on higher Reapers. Like, the raids is where the balance is actually still really good. Um, yes, they did too hot to handle on R10. I saw that. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> that was a funny video. They were all it, in the lava the whole time. Yeah, it. There, there were some mechanics that were used that were not intended mechanics. <laughs> like, yes, let's be yes. Honest. <laughs> but I know uh, they cheesed that, it, that but did still happen. they completed it. Um, but it didn't make it it wasn't to say that it was easy to do either. But like the but you're right, like that having that challenge um was really fun to watch them do because not only were they one having fun, but they were like trying to figure out new tactics and uh, ways around mechanics and uh, and exploring new abilities in ways that really benefit the entire community because it changes like there are things that that I know that came that are part of the meta and the build meta now that came out of uh, lava divers trying to do stuff in R10 and there was um, and I apologize to these people there were other guilds and other servers that were also trying like there was kind of a competition to see you could get it done first uh, and I don't remember who those other folks were 
but that pushing of each other made the whole community better because it changed some aspects of the meta and they you know people came up with new tactics and new ways to use abilities and it was really cool to watch so um yeah omni sounds right but i don't I don't remember if it's the omnipresence, omnipotent, or something like that. And I don't, yeah. <laughs> um, but then, you know, that that kind of, like, like what you're saying is, right, like, having that challenge, like, and when those challenges were no longer there, like, most of those people aren't really s still uh, around, <laughs> right? Like, they're, they're not really doing much right now because they beat it. They need more challenge. So I think having a high challenge is good. And if R10... Like, I don't know that we need to go to R15. Um, I'd be a little concerned about what that would do to the Reaper XP mechanics in and formulas and stuff. Um, and I recognize that even what I'm saying would make it harder for newer folks to get Reaper XP. Um, but I think, com I think completing any quest on R10 should be a difficulty where people can say, we did this in R10. That was hard, and it's amazing that we did that, and they should be celebrated for having completed something in R10. It shouldn't be an everyday thing, right? Like, it just wouldn't... Yeah, so... That's kind of where I stand on the Reaper thing. And what I'm saying... I, I'm looking on YouTube, and it looks like Lava Divers was the R10 to out the handle. I don't yeah, know if other guilds have done it. Um, I don't think so. I think it was kind of just, like, who was going to get there first. But and that's kind of usually how that works. But you know, people need challenge, and I think that challenge, if that challenge was more than raids, I think that would be amazing. So, and you know, there's an opportunity. We're talking about going to a level cap increase, so there is an opportunity there. Like, hey, maybe these in this section of the game, like you could you could do it. Like, okay, Reaper's going to scale differently from level thirty plus, right? Than it will for the rest of the game. Because to be fair, like I don't know that that I don't think that R10 is is broken in heroics. <laughs> it's not like you see a bunch of people doing R10s in heroics. Um, Voodoo, you probably can speak to this more than any of us can. Like how difficult like R8, R10 is in heroics right now. Yeah, High Skull Reaper is is harder in heroics than it is in legendary. Yeah. Uh, you know, there, for so many reasons, you know, you don't have all your access to all your reaper points. Your hit points are gated. You don't have your epic destinies. You don't have your end game gear. So, and that's one of the things that bugs me is that, you know, I really feel like reaper XP needs to be more weighted towards the skulls because, you know, if you try to go do R10 waterworks, that's way harder than, you know, R10, you know, in legendary Grim and Barrett legendary. Yeah. Yep. But yet you get a pittance for Reaper XP, so yep. there's no incentive other than, hey, we did it once. Okay, cool. I'm never doing that again. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, so I think maybe that's the answer, right? Is level th Reaper needs to scale differently in 30 and above and scale harder. But yeah, I don't think everyone should... We should not... Players should not feel entitled to be able to do R10, and R10 should not be completable by everybody. Up to R3? Oh, sure. I definitely yeah. agree with that sentiment. Players should not feel entitled to do R10, and I feel like there is a good amount As of that. As someone who cannot complete R10, I'm fine with that. <laughs> <laughs> I've like, never, I've really never gone past R7, uh, and yeah. that was only on... Not, that's pretty much on rare occasions. Um, and like, again, like, I'm not saying that... I, I don't want the lower skulls to, to, to push people out of being, playing Reaper, right? Like, I want players to be able to do R1, 2, 3, maybe even 4 easily, right? Like, that... I don't think where that is is a problem. It's just the higher skulls is the problem, so... Um... That was a bit of a rabbit hole. <laughs> um... This is really... I think some real quick stuff. Uh, the new Monster Manual is great, right? Like, but I don't know how much we pay attention to Monster Manuals. Um, Zero. Probably. Yeah. At least me. <laughs> I'm glad they added more, but I haven't paid close attention yeah. to it. The, the right, most exactly. I pay attention to it is when it, we get, you get the little notification, hey, you got some XP because you hit this mark in your right. monster man. I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah, and we like monster mans. We want more. Um, 
I don't know if there's really anything to, to say more about it, though. It's like, hey, great, we, had, we got another one. Finally. <laughs> it was the last time we had one. <laughs> Maybe it'd be the bigger thing to say. Um, so it was great to see a new one there. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I love the chains where you only have to, you don't have to run against the Demon Queen Part 1 every time we want to run the raid. Great change. Right? Okay, it's fine. I'm fine with that. It's fine. I don't really care, but <laughs> I will say that I never minded running out there. To me, that's part of the that was part of the raid and part of the experience. I know a lot of people don't like that. They see it as a waste of time, but I never minded personally. But uh, I guess overall, I don't really care. It's an old raid. Whatever. If you could bring twelve people, because the the pre raid was six person. Yeah, yeah the true. 12. That's yeah. Yes, you're right. You're right. That the, the pre raid six person, but I, I never minded going out and doing it. If you could do it as 12 people and it went straight in, if it was like Vaughn 5-6 where it was like you could take 12 people into the pre-raid and it went straight into that, great. No problem. <laughs> but it wasn't. That was the pain point. Uh, so. And there was, the other part about that too was the talking to the gen incorrectly. Is how many times, Voodoo, did you have a group that was running it and you'd get, you'd have two groups of six and you'd get out there and you'd run it and you get back and like someone in the group be like, oh, I didn't talk to the gen correctly, and I'm not flagged, even though I just ran it, <laughs> right? Like that was, that was kind of a sucky part. Not that this really fixes that, but it does a little bit. Um. Uh, Night Revels 2021. A little bit of lottie da affair for me <laughs> this year. It's like, hey, we had it's back. Get some XP. Um. There was a new color Reaper armor, which and festive constitution augment. Yep. There was that. That's true. Um, as an aside, I'm, cosmetics. I'm just gonna say this as an aside with the festive augments. Can they just all be in all of them? <laughs> like, do, why are some only in Night Revels and some only in this other one? Like, just put them they in all. They want you to run all the events. Sure, but just. Put them in all of them, like like. Then you could just run Night Revels and ignore the other ones, or whatever. Run uh, Crystal Cove and ignore the other ones, whatever event. I mean, you prefer. But also, then, like, if I need a, need another augment, and it's open, I would actually run some of the other stuff, right? Like, I would run. I would act personally. I would run the other content, the other festivals more if I could get an augment anytime I needed, like. All I needed was an, a festival to be open, and I could get whatever, whichever the festival augments I want. I would run that content more. But there also might be people who say, "Okay, there, I can just get it in Night Revels. I'll just wait for Night Revels, or they'll just run whatever their event of choice is and they ignore the other ones." So I, I think I'm okay with them having particular augments for particular events, and you still can get them. I mean, they are sellable and tradable. You still can sure. get them. You have to buy them for shards, but you still can get them. I'm going to have to agree with with Axel on this one. I mean, you're going to wait a whole year? <laughs> well, you could buy them on the auction, on the shard exchange or trade Do with the player. The um, I don't know. That's And they're pretty cheap. I mean, a lot of they're, they're not too expensive to get, so you do see them quite often on the shard house. Uh, I know I got a bunch of bunch of con ones this year, so I don't know. I know from my behavior would if I could get those festival augments at, during any of the festivals, I would run Night Revels less and run the other ones more. As opposed to, oh, I don't know. How many co Constitution augments do I want this year? I don't know. I'll go run and get 12 of them. Right? As opposed to, if I knew I could get them other times, if I needed one, I would go run it when, it, when that festival was available to go get it. But, hmm. Yeah. I really oh. hope that they do a little bit more next year. You know, we had, last year we had nothing new in Night Revels. This year was kind of light, no new challenges, just a few things. I really, I love, love, love Night Revels. So I really would like to see them give it a little more, more love in 2022. We should the mention thing... that they did change how you can get keys with the champion. Yes, that was a great change. Because people who just didn't want to, you know, farm it forever like I did, and they're just like, oh, I just want to get one or two things, could get enough keys just by running quests mm -hmm. to do that. Yep. They didn't need to run the key farming instance, and that was excellent. Right, and still, if you wanted to run the key farming instance, depending on your character, but for me, I got way more keys per minute from running the graveyard than just running quests. So you still could do that. 
if you wanted to, and it made sense. Um, the only thing, like, I love Night Rebels as well. The only thing I would like to see them do, if they could do something to incentivize grouping more, like, that would be an improvement. Um, I know they can't have it because of the, 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 the lag it caused. I really like the really old graveyard version of the graveyard where it was a community slight area. I know it's lag, it's a lag fest and that's why it went away, but some, if they could do something to encourage grouping a little bit more, that would be an improvement. But otherwise I, I love the event. I wouldn't mind if the, uh, if they redid the shadow dragon again or the, yeah, wherever the dragon is, um, and made it a raid instead of a six person party. Yep. And made it yeah, because more but... these events, um, at least to me, they, they're supposed to be a community thing. So there should be more reasons to actually engage with players on your server. What I see, I don't know about you all, but a lot of players just most players tend to just solo it. From what I've seen, I mean, I put up an L, I usually put up an LFM and usually run it with friends um, if I can. But like the only thing that I don't do that with is the is when I'm farming keys. I'm farming and, keys. I'll do that alone because I get more keys faster. But I don't have to do that anymore because I can just run content, normal content, yeah. and get keys. So yay! And I don't totally understand the leveling penalties, but I was running it with a friend, and I was getting like we were like two levels apart, and I was getting massive XP penalties, uh, first time penalties. I, I don't know why it worked that way, but that seems weird. Yeah, it uh, was weird. In epics, I don't think there are any XP penalties. It's just the the materials penalties if you're what, like three more than three levels. Mm -hmm. um, if you're heroic, I, I was getting XP, big XP group, penalties, and we were like, nerfed. yeah, we were like two levels apart. So I, I don't, yeah. I don't know how that works. Um. All right. Anything else with update fifty? We're talking about update fifty one. All right. Let's do it. Update fifty one had no content. <laughs> It was just Epic Destiny revamp, which was, um, and again, like, we're going to do a full review of this, and we'll kind of go through it in more in depth. I may even, I'm still kind of toying with the idea of doing like a video for each Epic Destiny to like really go into them in more in depth, even more so. Um, but uh, Update 51 landed on November 3rd. Uh, we got all the Epic Destiny revamps. Um, the epic feat changes, elemental parity with those feat changes. So it doesn't matter which element you're using as a caster. Um, and then also, I'm just thought that we we also got the fix to Reaper enhancements loading. So when you load into a quest and your Reaper enhancements get on and off, it's way faster and it's amazing. <laughs> um, so yeah, what do you guys think generally about update fifty one? Although we kind of talked about this a little bit already. Well, I mean, the system changes were one of the best changes they made in years. Mm -hmm. I mean, the the differences for especially new players and alts is just it's it's light and day. Game, yeah, it's light and day. Like my, I have a couple alts that I've ignored, um, particularly like a fighter alt that I have who uh, has no past lives or anything. He's actually still twenty eight point, but yeah, I mean, for him, it's like I shelved him years ago because i just didn't want to grind out epic destinies because mm -hmm. that's just not i just, i don't want to run in magister on my fighter I, I don't uh so uh yeah so um but for him i mean instantly being able to to access stuff like fury of the wild and get the healing um from that he was instantly able to solo like epic elite so it was it was great on that point i'm actually I don't know if I'm going to do anything on Hardcore Season 5, and I'm running out of... Like, I'm wasting time not doing anything on it. But, like, the thing that actually makes me want to run it the most is seeing how epics feel with the new system. Because I tried it before, and I, I just did not enjoy being in epics on Hardcore because of that. Because of how Epic Destinies worked, and it was just such a such a thing, right? Yeah, it should be easier now. Yep. Yeah, uh, I didn't even think about that, man. Not having mm -hmm. twists or any of your EDs, wow, that would have been a pain. Um, epic, I like how they changed the feats uh, with everything so that it's uh, much more... Like, it doesn't really matter what element you're using, you get the same benefit from it. Like, that was a really nice change, I think. 
Uh, I don't know if you guys have anything you want to say about that. That specifically, no, but I'll speak to Epic, the new Epic Destinies in general a bit. Sure. I may. Uh, so, you know, it didn't really... So far, I mean, I feel like there's going to be a lot more evolution to this and as people figure out different, you know, combinations and synergies and things. But so far, you know, I'd imagine that, you know, it was going to be a different feel to it when we could be in three different destinies. But I'm what I'm finding and not really liking about it is that I'm so deeply invested into my main destiny that all I'm able to do is just splash a little bit and get some low hanging fruit out of a couple of the destinies. Mm -hmm. And you know, because that's the way it is, at least my experience, I would almost rather just be in one destiny and be able to twist five things from any destinies. You know, I I was saying building up to this that I feel like I'm going to miss twists of fate. And now I can say for sure that that I do. Because if I'm full, very invested in this destiny, all I'm getting is low hanging fruit over here. I'd rather just say, I almost rather just say, forget that. And if I could twist five things from any destinies, and instead of having to pick low hanging fruit from two, you know, where I could twist in like tier four stuff from other destinies, I could twist five things from five other destinies. Like, I definitely miss twists of fate. Uh, and I. I don't, you know, to me, just being able to splash a little bit in a couple off destinies is not as, um, it's not giving me that versatility. Yeah, the versatility that mm-hmm. I was hoping for. Uh, I really like some of the new abilities that have come out. You know, I love what they did generally with Unyielding Sentinel. I love the, the shield and, um, I, I, I don't, I don't know how to, to, change that but that's definitely where i'm feeling right now i've really wanted to i would love to have just one more tree that i could dip into (laughs) the three limit the limit of three is a is a bit limiting and maybe there's balance i guess there's balance reasons for it but yeah i would love to have access to a fourth twists i'm okay with there's uh, some stuff i miss being able to twist but generally at least on my characters, I I'm okay with. I I think the trade offs are. It's worth the trade off with the new system because it does make more sense and it is more new player friendly uh, to have it work like the heroic system. I think really what Voodoo is kind of touching on is is the same thing that I've been harping on is just that fundamentally, the system I think is a lot better, and I don't think not having twists is a problem. I think the problem is how expensive it is to move vertically in the trees relative to how many points we have. You end up, if you want to move really high vertically in a tree, you end up feeling like you're just barely dabbling in other trees because you don't have the points. Can we get a build your own tree feature? Like tier one, (laughs) choose any five tier two, choose any five. Eh, Maybe. Um, I mean, I think and I think the, the quickest, best solution to that is just reduce the number of points it takes to move vertically in the tree. Like the level, level gating is fine, but if you if it costs five points less to move up with each tree, I think it'd be a huge difference into what you're talking about. So, um, I mean, that's kind of where I've, I keep landing, is it's just too damn expensive to move vertically. Especially in some trees that... Um, I think of the trees that I've really played with, I think Shadow Dancer is the one that I find the most egregious of this. Of like, I need to spend 20 points to get into this tier. Okay, what have I not bought that I can buy? Well, this is crap, but I need the points to go up, so I'm going to get that, right? Like, I'm a rogue. I don't care about casting stuff. I guess I'm going to take this casting thing because it's the only thing left to spend. It's better than anything else I have to spend on. Um, So. And I think and I keep seeing, and I'm seeing it in the chat again, like, well, when, you know, when we get more points, I'm like, okay, when I get more points, yes, it will fix that problem for those levels. It doesn't fix the problem for the levels I'm at right now. And the levels I will continue to be at every time I do an epic life. So. Speaking of points, I want to say this. I still don't know the difference between a fate point and a destiny point. I know yeah. one's like three, three to one. So whatever one is an action point, can we can we just relabel that and call it like if if destiny points are the action points, can we call them destiny action points? I realize that's a real tiny change, but I think that's going to help 
the slow folks like me, you know, remember, oh, these are the action points. I mean, I can do you one better. And I said this when they were designing the system, uh, and I know why it didn't happen. Uh, and it makes even less sense now because of other things, and I'll tell you that too. But there should it should just all be fate points. Fate points is what you put into the tree, period. There's no destiny points. It's fate points. They're all fate points. The reason they didn't do that was because they had fate tomes and destiny point tomes at That's the same exactly time. what I was assuming as well because the current system is really confusing to people. I was specifically told that. Yep. And... Uh, now that we have fate, uh, Destiny Tome Historic and Destiny Tome Feywild, it's more ludicrous because it could just be, oh, you had a Destiny Point Tome. That's now a Fate Tome Plus 3 Historic or a Fate Tome Plus 3 De- uh, Feywild, right? And it's just, it's all Fate Points. You don't have You don't have to do any conversion of Fate Points to Destiny Points. Fate points sounds better. You don't have two point systems that are converting one to the other that you have to figure out what it is. Anything, just a better system. And they could have done it. Off the Band-Aid. They, they could have done it. They didn't do it because they had, they needed to support having fate tomes and destiny tomes. And they still could have done it. <laughs> and they didn't do it anyways. So. Yeah, it's, I made a spreadsheet the other day because I was trying to recalculate oh to make sure my my uh, characters had the, the right amount of uh, points as I was trying to figure out which ones had used the historic tome and which one hadn't because there's actually, as far as I can tell, no way to check in-game uh, for those, uh, whether you've used them or not. Right. So, yeah, it's just, um, it's really, really, uh, really convoluted and no one understands it. <laughs> yeah. So, there you go. Um... Yeah. Uh, anything else we want to say about Update 51? Again, we're going to come back to Update 51 in, in much more detail in, in the Destinies and go through Destinies more. Um, but uh, I'll say again, like I really love that you, it doesn't matter what element I am <laughs> now. That's really nice. Like feats, feats are the same for each element. It doesn't matter. Like Fire is not statistically better just because it has the fire. The, it's the only feat that has critical damage. So... That's really nice. Um, I do like the um, the way they did the the um, elemental feats too. Um, for the destinies, the the quote destiny feats. Um, so like, it doesn't matter whichever one you take. Um, it does uh, it does some nice things for um, all of your spells. So that's really nice. I really like that. Um, some other things that came out this year that we haven't talked about. Um, the Mount Cache. I want to mention the Mount Cache. Um, I couldn't find it in any of the release notes I was looking through. I don't know when it came, but I'm pretty sure it came this year. Um, so that was fantastic, right? So you get, uh, not having to have mounts on each of your characters. It's just in this, this little cache. Great. Fantastic. Love it. I don't think we need to say, I don't know if we need to say any more than that. (laughs) Oh, it was awesome change. Um, hardcore. Let's talk about hardcore. That's the other thing that happened. We had hardcore season four, um, and then um, there was also a uh, hardcore season five, which just started. Um, so that's uh, great. Um, the yeah, let's just start with hardcore season four, or just hardcore in general. Uh, was great this year, I think. Mimics, that was fun. I didn't do Hardcore 4, and I, I'm totally against the idea of making Hardcore even harder. But, uh, <laughs> you know, as I said before, I won't go to Hardcore unless you give me a reason to. Uh, and, a, and a horse with a fancy saddle is not enough of a reason. Uh, <laughs> you know, I want a skeletal mount. I want a phantom mount. I can't because I can't live my DDO life without a skeletal horse mount or like a phantom horse mount or something like that. But I don't need a fancy saddle. So, and here's it. Here's another. This is something I have said repeatedly, and this is something that would have gotten me to go to level twenty on every season of hardcore. If on my sash, I could get like a little stamp that said like Roman numeral two, Roman numeral three, Roman numeral four. So on the same sash, 
I would have all my little Boy Scout merit badges saying that I learned how to build a fire on every season of Hardcore. But instead, there's a different sash for every season. I would love a way for us to crunch those into one, one Boy Scout sash with all the little Roman numerals on one. That would be cool. Oh, I would have sure. gone to level 20 every season of Hardcore just for that. Yeah, that would have been fun. Um, I like the mimics. Uh, I thought it was a great, a great little uh, little wrinkle. Um, I, in particular, loved the messages I got uh, right out of the gate because people heard me talk about that, and then it was a thing. <laughs> so that was fun. Um, but I like when they change things and. and I think it's okay that sometimes hardcore's harder and sometimes hardcore's easier. But... I just think there's too many people struggling to get the things they want. You know, these aren't sure. like things that are going to make you OP. It's just cosmetics. And, you know, I'm I'm a big, you know, I'm, I always say let them eat cake, you know? <laughs> I don't know who said that first, but I'm saying it now. Like, if the kids want to eat cake, let them eat cake. Like, if somebody puts in an effort, I want them to get the things they want or at least have a decent chance. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like hardcore is is challenging enough, you know, and the people if you know, the people that are that are gunning for the leaderboards to win hardcore, like they're still going to be competing with each other. Maybe they'll get a little bit more favor. Maybe they'll get a little bit more Reaper XP. But, you know, let's not make it any harder to get a sash or a mount or something like that. That's already challenging enough. Getting 5000 favor without dying. That's a big challenge for, you know, 99% <laughs> of the community. It's true. Um they did, I will point out though, season three was a lot easier because you had extra lives. So, I I like the experimentation. That's really cool. Like, okay, it's it's too. Is it harder? Sure, but I don't think that's actually a bad thing. Like, I think having it, having some variety is is fun. Uh, and yes, Gray Wolf, I do enjoy watching Nineteens die, especially the lava. That's kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Seen that a few times. Um. That that death message board is is perhaps the best part of hardcore. It's like, ooh, I remember our season I saw some one. People were some people were playing with it with PvP. You can just yeah. have yeah. I saw some of that. I did. Um, I do remember season one where like the there was someone who was like level twenty nine or thirty died, and there was there was a lot of reaction like, oh my gosh, he died at level thirty. <laughs> um, so. If I recall correctly, that per particular person didn't realize that uh, mind flitters could eat your brain. Didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> Rough way to learn <laughs> learn that. Uh, that person does not play pen and paper Dungeons and Dragons, nope. apparently. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyways. Uh, right, so that's kind of a rundown of 2021. Uh, big picture. Let's talk about 2021 as a whole. How do you guys feel about it? I mean, the Epic Destiny changes alone with the system changes made made it a good year for me. Uh, what we got, I liked. But I really, really do not like the fact that we got a contentless update. Mm -hmm. That does not sit well with me at all. That's never happened in my DDO life. Uh, so, yeah. I realize that there was a lot of work done on Epic Destinies. I appreciate that. But I also know that they've been working on this system for well over a year. So it's not like this is something they were crunching together at the last second. So and so we got contentless update followed by one quest. And it just doesn't mm -hmm. sit well with me. And I, I, I think my suspicion is that this quest that we just got, the Portent of Dread, wasn't supposed to come out now. That was supposed to come out in the winter. We were supposed to get the whole Feywild Wild Wild Hunt themed adventure pack and raid at the end of the year, but that got pushed back, and I think they stuck Portent of Dread in here just to put something in there. So, yep, like I said, right. what we got I liked, but I do not like the contentless update. I think it's a good way of putting it. What we got we like, but we didn't. The content is lacking. Like the big thing for me, I looked through what we got this year and I was putting this together. It's like, man, there was a lot of system stuff this year. 
And I think a lot of it was really good, right? Like, it, did it hurt when we did the stat squish and some of the Epic Destiny revamps? Yes. But I think the game and, you know, the, the double strike changes, some, some of those spell changes, I think the game from a system standpoint is in a much, much better spot now than it was at the beginning of the year. Uh, and I think we're set up much better. And I hope the next... Like, I think if they do do some really good work on uh, a Reaper Pass, and uh, we know we're going to get a level increase next year, uh, I think the game could be in a really great place. But man, the content this year hurts. And like, I remember... I don't remember if it was... Was it last year or the year before Voodoo that it was like, look at all the content we got this year, right? You remember that? And this year, it's like, okay, what did we get for content? Uh, for We got Peril of the Planner Eyes, which was four quests. It was Adventure Pack. We got one free quest, Port and Dread, which we just got. Uh, and that's the only content we got this year that wasn't an expansion. Oh, oh, right. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, they can keep calling it a mini-expansion. Saltmarsh was an expansion. Like, you can put mini in front of it. It doesn't change a damn thing for me. It's still an expansion, right? So, now, I will say, in some amount of fairness, we got Fables of Feywild in November 2020. Normally, we don't get... Normally, we get, like, a quest around this time of year, right? Like, we're not normally getting the amount of content we got from Fables of the Feywild at the end of the year, like we did last year. But it's an expansion still, right? So that's still, like, there's still a problem there in terms of how much content we're getting that's outside of an expansion. And we know we're getting another expansion next year, right? Like, the next update should be the um, the one you were talking about, the Wild Hunt with the Raid. And then we're going to get Isle of Dread, right? Like, that's, to our understanding, at least as far as I'm aware, those are our next two content packs. So that means you're going to go, f you know, expansion, not expansion. Expansion, one quest, not expansion, expansion. Like, there's going to be, like, three times as much content behind expansions in a year and a half that's not. And I don't think that's good. Especially when we're having conversations as player base of, what am I getting for my VIP? What am I getting for value as being a VIP? That's where I wanted to go next. That's my other little bone to pick. So I want to say awesome job, SSG. On, I'm so glad they bring back all the quests for free. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So the, to me, in, that, in the context of here's all the quests for free, it seems okay that we have lots of expansions to, to buy. Uh, and, but on the other hand, like they said, they wanted to expand upon the VIP offerings in the producer letter. Now, what we've seen so far is that about once a month, the the weekly bonus, you know, the VIPs get a little more. Oh, hey, everybody gets a 10% XP boost. VIPs get 15. And that's cool. I'm glad that they did that. And I want them to continue to do that. They did not expand the base offerings, which I felt like that's what they were going to do. So I want to see that. I'm still VIP. I'm happy to support the game. I want to see more since all the quests are given away for free. Yeah. Yeah, like it, the the I'm not sure why exactly. I mean, if you're going to play long term, it doesn't really make a lot of sense anymore to be VIP. The the content just isn't cutting it anymore. They need to add more perks. And I know several in did talk some about that, about some ideas in their last Q&A with Cordovan. Um, so, yeah, they need to definitely make improvements there. Yeah, and, and I don't I don't know what those initially are. You know, here's an easy one that I'll just throw out. Maybe VIPs get one hour longer on their ship buffs. Or two he, hours he, longer. He threw out I mean, no, none of this was like promises, obviously. It was just right. him throwing out ideas. But he one thing he talked about was maybe quick uh fast travel from your quest log for VIPs, something like that. I mean, there's some um I mean, I understand his point, uh, and I, I completely agree with his point. Like, VIP, you shouldn't, VIP bonuses shouldn't make it so um, you can't, you feel like you have to be a VIP 
to play the game, right? Like it can't outpace there. Uh, but I have seen a lot of uh, a lot of stuff, right? Like more XP boost uh, for buddies too. Voodoo in our chat is mentioning the ran no ransack for VIPs. I don't know if no ransack, but being able to run con like having a less ransack maybe, or uh, you know maybe um, maybe a VIP can run a quest uh, another time without getting a a a rerun penalty for the day or something or like a less rerun penalty something like that. Um, free chest reroll, yeah. I don't think um, I don't think one quest per day without dungeon alert is gonna work for a variety of reasons. Um, uh, lag. Although that's kind of fun. I'm not even like, just from a mechanic standpoint. Like, uh, does that does it be everyone in the group? Is it the first time? Or, I don't know. Um, but like, there's a lot of stuff that they could do. But I think I think going into next year, SSG really needs to recognize a couple of things that they they need to address. Um, and what. At the top of that list, I think, is uh, performance issues and customer service. Like Those, I think, are the top two things they, they have to get into a better place. Um, not just keep talking about but they have to succeed and get meaningful a, a meaningful bonus on that. And I think right behind that is VIP value. And they sort of gave us this like little thing. like They, they gave us something of that with like the expansion was a little cheaper. The salt marsh was a little cheaper if you were a VIP, but not by. I, I mean, I think that was good, and they should keep doing that. But I think it needs to be a little better than what they did. Yeah, it was what like ten ten percent. I think it was ten percent. Yeah. Um, and I think it, they would probably be better doing like a a flat dollar amount. I think this is me personally, but um. I mean, it it was better than what we've had, right? Like, don't get me wrong there. Like, but they just need they need more value, right? For VIPs, why are we VIP? Why are we VIP? What do we get out of it? And at the cost of a hundred, what is it? A hundred dollars a year? I want to say it's like. It's I mean, like honestly, for me, a big reason why I'm still VIP is I just want to support the game. You know, right. that's that's I don't buy anything else, so I'm like, you know, I want to. Support the game a little bit. I do enjoy the other perks, don't get me wrong, but it is getting harder and harder to, you know, convince others that going VIP is a good idea. Yeah. Um, yeah. Definitely. Uh, and, I mean, I've even had thoughts in my head of, do I want to not be VIP? Like, well... I don't know that I... Look, I don't think I'm getting a great value out of it as I was... Like I'm not getting into the value of items I used to, but for other reasons, like I still am. Um, like you said, supporting the game, um, and like I can afford it. It's not like an affording problem. But I tell you, if like if if the last year, last two years went differently for me with the pandemic, like this would have been one of the first things I would have cut. At this point, right? Like if I needed to save a hundred dollars a year. This this would go pretty quick, right now. Yeah, big time. So, um, I can support the game, and I love the game. Uh, you know, I've done three hundred and sixty podcast episodes about the game. <laughs> uh, I play it a lot, like, so I'm willing to put some money behind that. But also, like the when people say like, "Where's the value I'm getting for this?" I'm not going to pay you for this this value. I think they are they're hundred percent right. Like, so. Yeah, it's a good way. Grave says that VIP seems more like a donation than buying something meaningful. This year, I think that's pretty accurate. So, uh, anything else you guys wanna wanna say before we head out? I'm super, super, super enthusiastic about Isle of Dread next year. <laughs> 2022 does look good, right? Like, it looks exciting. Yeah, I wanted it for quite a while. So, yeah, Isle of Dread. Can't wait. Isle of Dread should be fun. Uh, I'm ex I'm interested to see what they do with this wild hunt thing like that. Uh, that could be interesting. So, um, I don't know that we really know a whole lot else that's coming next year yet. 
So we'll see. We know new race and iconic. Yep. But yeah, with Isle of Dread. With the exciting. expansion, yeah. Not level cap increase, obviously, with the yeah. expansion. Not super excited about it being an expansion, but it I think it also make I mean it makes sense to me that it would be an expansion. Just like we need to get not a lot more non expansion content next year. Yeah, there is definitely a good conversation to be had about them if they're doing expansions too often. When we just got one, now we're getting another one like the next as the next big thing. So hopefully there is a couple just regular adventure packs in twenty twenty two as well. They need a lot more, right? Mm-hmm. Because we used to get what, like one every quarter, um, previous years, something like that, or at least like three a year. Um, I mean, so I mean, just put this in perspective. Uh, I think we talked talked about this recently, but Lost Gatekeepers was April twenty third, twenty twenty. Uh, the next, then we got. Promise of Fire, that quest. We got the three legendary raids that were there as well. Uh, Parallel Planar Eyes is the other expansion pack, or other adventure pack. And then Portent of Dread. Like, that's not a lot of content in there. Um, so, it's been a lot more expansions of late than it's been content. There you go. Um, well, guys, thanks for joining us today for uh, our 2020 in review. Uh, Axel, why don't you promote your stuff? Yeah. Um, okay. So I'm a DDO YouTuber, Axel's DDO channel on YouTube. You can find me making videos there, uh, streaming also twitch.tv slash Axel Alex K. If you want to give me a follow, that'd be appreciated. Um, I stream a lot uh, like evenings during the week, mainly evenings like um Eastern time evenings. And we're talking about you're streaming chess, which Yeah, I'm streaming a lot of stuff, not just DDO. <laughs> a lot of DDO, but also chess and a lot of like retro games. I'll stream a bunch of the old NES Mega Man games as well. So a variety of things. Mega Man place that's near and dear to my heart. I used to play those um a lot. Also yeah, I, I played just... uh I played through the first four on stream. I'm on number five right now. There you go. Um mm-hmm. I, I just think it's kind of crazy that chess was like the most streamed game last year. <laughs> Yeah, I things. love chess. That's kind of crazy. Um, Voodoo, where can folks find you? Well, I used to stream DDO, but I'm going to stream chess now, starting immediately. <laughs> Dude, let me know. We can play. <laughs> uh, you can find me on YouTube, uh, channel Voodoo Spice, where you can find uh, over 1,000 DDO videos, quest walkthroughs, raid guides, crafting tutorials, and so much more. And you can find me live streaming on Twitch, channel Voodoo Spice, nearly every day. I was live streaming immediately before the show. And I will be live streaming immediately after the show t- today, uh, live streaming Hardcore Season 5 until I die. <laughs> this is why he doesn't want it to be harder. He wants to live stream Hardcore longer so he doesn't die. Um, <laughs> I will say on the, on the chess thing, if you've never played Battle Chess, check out that version of chess. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. That was great, right? Yeah, it was. <laughs> I played that back in the day. It's like yeah. chess, but you get some cool animations. You get animations when you take, attacking take each other. Yeah, yeah, it was great. I used to I used to spend time like making like trying to okay, I'm gonna capture each each piece with each piece, right? So I get to see all the animations. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, thanks for listening to the show. Thanks. Uh, we have. A very lively chat today. That was a lot of fun uh, to have. Uh, so thanks for joining us there. Uh, and thanks to uh, Axel and Voodoo for joining me today. And thanks to all the contributors for DDOcast. Uh, if you would like to support the show, you can visit our website at DDOcast.com or you can support us on Patreon or you can also just uh, watch stuff. That helps too. Uh, if you have a DDO themed webpage or you Twitch DDO and you'd like to be featured on our website, you can email us at DDOcast at gmail.com. You can also hit us up at DDOcast.com for our show notes, MP3s, our calendar, previous shows, and other fun stuff, including various adventures in DDO, D&D, Tabletop, and even some other games. Uh, if you have a comment on this episode, a question you'd like to hear us answer, a topic you'd like to hear us discuss, 
or you just want to say hi, leave a comment or email us at DitoCast at gmail.com. You can also find me on social media for latest cast updates at DitoCast on Twitter is the best place. Uh, remember, we probably won't have a live show for a couple of weeks as well. So until next time, may all your attack rolls be crits, all your chest level appropriate, have fun, and don't forget to gather for buffs. Thank you.